This video is brought to you by Wicket Cricket Manager. So I recorded this video absolutely perfectly from the ground and uh, something went wrong with the sound. But what I was going to say is that Mark Wood was not very good in England before this series. In fact, you could have made a pretty good argument that his home wickets uh, were not really what he needed. And by Lords, it was very clear that England didn't really have a choice. They needed something different than the military medium militia that they had been employing so far in this Ashes. And of course, Wood would have played in that test if he had been fit. But you could say that about Wood and almost any test throughout his entire career because he is almost never fit. And the weird thing looking back right now is if his elbow had stayed injured for Leeds, this series would be over. Australia could have played exactly as they had in Leeds, but they would have won just because Mark Wood would not have been there. He's the reason that this series is going towards England and that they are even still in it at all. Day one at Leeds, he was quick. And while Australians are used to fast bowling, Wood is just next level, right? And so the man who 10 minutes before play was barking like a dog in the change room was now biting the Australians hard. Also, I suppose, like a dog. And remember that the Australian match was won by the Aussie tail. That's not another dog reference, by the way. And at Headingley, Wokes had opened up an end by taking Mitch Marsh and Wood flew through it. The Australian tail were playing shots like several minutes after Wood had pulled the ball to them. Do you know what this wasn't? Ollie Robertson bowling bounces at 76 miles per hour. Wood was completely on fire and Australia were 240 for five and then 263 all out. But then England then went to have a bat and they were ordinary. So they gave up all that advantage and they slumped to 141 for seven. That is when Wood came out to bat. One of the most curious new additions to cricket is the chaos hitter. Traditionally, you had guys who slogged at number 10 or 11. That's what the tail did. But in recent times, we are seeing players like Shadul Takua, who are not quite all-rounders, but the speed of their runs makes them so much more valuable. And Mark Wood can actually bat. Probably not quite at the Shadul Takua level, but he averages 20 in first-class cricket. But a while back, he decided, and this was pre baseball kids, that his best option was just to slog everything he could. And who is to know what makes more of an impact? A 30 carefully nudged over 15 overs or 24 from eight balls of complete mayhem. But when Wood slogged the Australian bowlers, he seemed to let his tail know and also his captain know that the pitch at Henningley wasn't too bad. So Stokes carried on with the majority of the work, but it was Wood's micro counterattack that really got into the Australians' heads. I know that you think you could run your favorite cricket team better than those who do, but no one is going to let you do that. So why not try Wicket Cricket Manager to satisfy that urge? Pick your nation, pick your league, pick your players, and yell at them when they do poorly. You can find it in the links below or by searching for Wicket Cricket Manager in your app store today. In the second innings, I thought Wood looked a little bit cooked. He hadn't bowled in a while, but he still managed to take the wickets of Stark and Cummins. And the thing is, if you are a very fast bowler, that is kind of what your job is, right? To take the tail. But Wood wasn't done in that game. He then came out to bat with Chris Wokes when the score was 230 for seven and 21 runs were needed. And he made 16 of them from eight balls of more chaos. Every single innings at Henningley, Mark Wood was a factor. And that is why England won that test. Here, Wood only took one wicket in the first innings. But what a wicket. It was Steve Smith, right? He was batting on wheels at the time when he missed a straight one from Wood. And first inning, Steve Smith, that's the hardest one to get a ball through, right? With the bat in their first innings, Wood was barely needed. And if anything, he was strangely docile, letting Bairstow have all the fun. But then it was time for Australia's weirdly tricky third innings. They are well behind in this game. They don't seem to know whether to just bat as long as they can, think about the draw. There's all this rain to come. Yet Australia had a fairly flat pitch and outside the odd surprise grubber, England did not look completely on their game, except for Wood. He looked brutal. He was fast again from ball one. He got one to lift against Usman Khawaja that confused the batter so much that he had no idea about it when he was playing it and then still had no idea about it afterwards. So he reviewed to have a second look. Then he made Smith move around the crease, who was trying a way to work out the extra pace. And eventually he would just flick a hook behind. And that was happening just as Australia were looking pretty settled. But finally it was Travis Head, who had been jumping up to play the short balls all the way through the summer and not getting dismissed by them. But finally Wood managed to pluck him out of midair and get him with the short ball off the glove and took his third victim. Australia looked fine against England. They looked terrified of Wood. Since entering this Ashes, he has done something special in all six of the innings that England needed something from him. 
England were not very good before Mark Wood started playing in this series. You could have made a pretty good argument that they had no chance of winning it then. But with Wood, they look like a much better team than Australia. And at the moment, it looks like only rain can stop them.